Scott Manley here with part two of my step-by-step -step introduction to EVE Online for brand new players. I have traveled to my um, career agent school location and I'm standing in my hangar with my awesome newbie ship. As I pointed out, this is Minmatar. Uh, you, if you have gone the Amarian, Kaldari or um, Galente route, uh, you will have a different spacecraft, you may have different modules, you will be in a different place completely. But that doesn't matter, the playthrough is practically the same with just a few minor changes, and we'll talk about those. Anyway, a few hours have passed since uh, I did the previous episode, and you see now that we actually have level 3 in Minmatar Frigate. Uh, I'm still training level 4 because I set that up. This is very useful. If I go to the market, and I'm going to search for Destroyer, right? So that will actually show me the skill books for the next level. Minmatar Destroyer is the next step up from uh, Minmatar Frigate. And to fly a Minmatar Destroyer, I need to train the Minmatar Destroyer skill. And that means I need level 3 in Minmatar Frigate, which is great. So that means I can step up to a Destroyer when I have the skills in the cache. And I don't need to wait hours and hours and hours to train that. So this was the plan. That was one of the reasons why I did this. Uh, you also need Spaceship Command, but I already have that. So anyway, moving forwards, I'm not going to buy that skill book just yet because we actually are likely to get that during the next set of missions. Now, uh, if you see here, these are the agents. If you are somewhere looking for these agents, go to the help, right, and look for career advancements. Show career agents. And it will give you the nearest set of five career agents in your region. There are 12 sets of uh, agents, three, uh, three sets for each race, and they all give you exactly the same missions, but with, they're all different names. So you have business, which is all about how the market works and you know buying and selling stuff. Exploration is all about how to use exploration probes to scan down sites and make money from those. Industry is about asteroid mining and then taking the minerals from those asteroids and building spacecraft and everything else. Military is of course shooting things and advanced military, which I suggest waiting till after you've done the military tutorial, is all about shooting things and killing things and advanced military is way harder. So yeah, let's uh, let's just start out with business. So I'll start conversation with this dude and it says, warning, if you decline or fail a mission, then you will be in trouble. So don't decline or fail any of these missions. So you start out a mission arc, which says balancing the books. And this is a straight up courier mission. So I have to go set, pick up location is Embod and the drop-off location is Lutmur. So I'm in Embod. I'm going to set the destination for Lutmar. And since I'm going to come back, I'm going to actually add a waypoint for Embod. So I have two waypoints in my history. And I now have two steps. So I'm going to get 47,000 credits for doing this. Uh, if I do it quickly, and if you can't do it in 1 hour and 22 minutes, then I will be sorely disappointed. Then you get extra cash. But to do this, I actually have to put down some money, right? The collateral is 153.66. I'm also going to get the Mining Frigate Skillbook, which is actually going to be useful later on. So I'm going to accept this mission. And now if I look in my inventory, I should have in my item hanger, this, these data sheets, right? So let's stick this in here. So I'm gonna have to carry that. Also, I have the mining frigate skill. So I'm gonna start training that because it may prove useful later on. And that will be at the start of my queue. So let's undock and you see the whole animation happening and off we go into deep space, eventually. <laughs> this is called a session change and session change timers are a big issue. So the jump gate is illuminated, or is highlighted yellow. Let's warp towards it. Uh, what do we have here? You can see other pilots floating around here, adventures and bursts. They are different spacecraft. Also, these sites which you're seeing on the scanner, those are uh, scan sites that are used in exploration. We will talk about that later. Now, while I'm here, let's uh, while we're warping, let's take a look at this. I am in the corporation Pator Tech School. That is an NPC corporation, right? If I um, if I look for this, well, I will be paying a an eleven percent. Hold on, is it corporation? No fleet. I gotta actually go up here. 
business, social corporation, social corporation, there. So I can actually look at home. My corporation is Pator Tech School. And here I am jumping through the gate. Tax rate is 11%. That means when I kill anything, I give it, or get mission rewards, 11% of it goes magically to an NPC corporation and I don't see it. This is one of the reasons why you might want to join a player-run corporation. Now, players can run their own corporations. And many people call them guilds because they have come from certain other games. They are called corporations in EVE Online. The words are the same. Um, so once you run a corporation, uh, you can set whatever tax rate you like. You will get people uh, inviting you and rookie help usually so they'll say hey maybe you want to come and join my corporation you may get contacted by people asking you to join their corporation be very careful look at what the tax rate is if it's more than 10 percent they are probably just trying to make a quick buck off you um, ask what they're going to give you why they should join your corp why you should join their corporation be very careful right they're looking for you to join them and although it should it should be a mutually beneficial relationship anyway i'm here let me talk to this dude and complete the mission. Excellent, and now I get a little tutorial about salvaging, which we shall look at when we undock and head to another location. So it's telling us that the destroyed ship has more value than just its cargo. The wreck itself contains a mix of metals, circuits, and other mechanical parts which can be sold in the market. With new technology recently released to pilots, you can now retrieve some of this debris. Wrecks vary in size, and while they all contain materials that can be salvaged, a good rule of thumb is the larger the ship, the more salvageable components. These components can be used in production of rigs, which are permanent ship modifications. You can either use them yourself or sell them on the market to enthusiastic buyers. So uh, that's all set up, and you're going to get a civilian salvager for this mission. This is, war this is telling you about the next mission as we're flying towards it. A civilian salvager is a module it will fit in a high shot slot also it tells you that when you complete this mission you're going to get a venture which is nice a venture being a mining frigate to continue salvaging career outside of this tutorial it is recommended you upgrade to a salvager one module and yes you will need to train the skill for that and we'll explain about this but yes Let's talk about the actual mission offer. The mission has been offered even though we haven't got back to the station. I need you to recover something for me. A transport ship carrying sensitive data was not intercepted by Angel Cartel vessels not long ago. And we need to gather as much information as we can about the attack. There may be some hostiles still lingering out around too. So be ready for combat. Sizzig Fidard. What a silly name that is. I'll give you this civilian salvager. Once you've cleared the area, it will help you find anything remaining anon amongst the wreckage of the transport ship. If you look around the debris for long enough, I'm confident you will find the black box. It records everything that took place during the attack, so we must acquire it. I need your discretion here. The information that ship was carrying, well, if the tribal leadership caught wind of what happened here, let's just say things could get complicated for my superiors. Keep this assignment to yourself, and I'll reward you with a venture. It's a great little mining frigate. Yes, it is. If you show info on it, it's an awesome little ship. And if I look at the market, view market details, you'll see that ventures, well, they cost about 340,000 credits. Uh, incidentally, I probably haven't even mentioned this so far, but um, you as a, you have a wallet and you are making money in terms of ISK. ISK being interstellar credits, which just happens to be the same abbreviation used for Icelandic credits. Go figure. Uh, EVE Online is, of course, developed by a bunch of crazy people in Iceland, and that explains why it's vastly different from almost any other game. So yeah, 97,000 credits already, but you can see that um, ventures are quite valuable compared to this small amount of money. So anyway, I'm going to accept this mission. It's still in Embod, and if I look at my item hanger, I should have a civilian salvager. Now, if I go to the fitting window you'll see I have a free high slot and this fits in a high slot so if I right click I can either drag it or I can right click and fit to active ship and it goes in there so I now have a spacecraft with shield boosters a gun and uh, salvager 
but it's only a civilian salvager and it's actually pretty rubbish. So let's uh, head out there towards the target. Undock when ready to proceed. Oh, and this tells you about the acceleration gate, which you have already encountered. So I'm just going to close this down. So I can warp to the target by right clicking on space and you see agent missions balanced balancing the books to encounter dead space warp to location so here we go now if you look very carefully oh if i turn the camera correctly i can zoom in by holding both mouse buttons there is my salvager now that is mounted on my ship you see it folding away there uh whoop. and on the other side there's my gun oh shaking camera a lot but watch as we land at the site now we're in in now we're in warp, we stop shaking. So only we only shake when we're accelerating and decelerating. Let's let's watch this as we come out of warp. Come on! Ah dear 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 dear. There I see the acceleration gate. So as we get back you should see the gun deploy. The guns will stow themselves until you are on grid and therefore able to shoot. There we go. That's a hundred and twenty five millimeter autocannon. Yes, Gatling autocannon. So, select the gate and warp through it. You can do this using the radial menu and they encourage it, you to do that, but the radial menu you have to click on space. You're going to be spending a lot more time looking at the overview when you're playing the game because that's really where all the information is. So this tells you activate the gate and you don't need to worry about this. So now we arrive at the site and doesn't it look grand? We have a transport here which uh, looks like a diamond shaped object but we have a an angel rookie so I'm gonna go in and attack him so what I do is I click the target site the targeting icon to lock target and I click the approach button now this is very simple right now um, normally when you're attacking you probably want to be orbiting but for the moment I'm just using the approach icon and before people tell me otherwise once you get within about 8 kilometers, you should have a chance of hitting. And you'll see the reports on your attempts to shoot them up here. There, I I'm hitting for 18 points of damage. I can mouse over here and look at their shields and everything. There we go. And it explodes. Now, notice this in space. This is the wreckage that was left behind by that frigate. So let's actually... It'd be nice to be able to see wreckage on the overview. So I'm going to right click add wreck to overview now there's a whole lot of things you can do in your overview uh, and I'm not even going to get into that but suffice to say if you get into PvP with any alliance they will probably have overview configuration files which you want I'm just using this right now and if I click on the open on this target I can see that there is metal scraps in here excellent just click the loot all button and it will move magically into my cargo bay I will be able to refine this and sell it for cash. Anyway, let's go towards the civilian transport. And this is a white diamond shaped object. Now if I try to open it, it won't let me. So what I need to do is use the salvager on it. So now I click on the salvager, but I haven't targeted it so it doesn't work. You need to target the object. And once targeted, you should see the salvager kick into action. Uh, there we go. Uh, actually, there's not any effects because I'm so darn close. Maybe if I uh, orbit at 500 meters, I'll be able to see it better. Now, an important thing that I forgot to mention during my previous episode. You have seen a couple of objects here where you can take stuff from them. Uh, these white diamond shaped things. You will see perhaps yellow and blue ones occasionally. Do not take anything from a yellow one, because a yellow one belongs to something else. If you take something from a yellow one, you will be flagged as a suspect, and then basically anyone can shoot you and kill you. So it's quite often for people to leave yellow containers outside of space uh, stations where newbies are, so that the new pilots take them and then get shot, and they learn a hard lesson. Anyway, look, we have the black box. Show info. Contains the last communication from a spaceship as well as various data regarding its destruction. And that's us. We've completed this very, very simple mission. And we're going to head back to Pator Tech School. So, um, other things to know about corporations, incidentally, is that 
you know, most corporations will explain whether they're high sec or low sec or null sec. Null sec is basically where the sovereignty holding organizations are. Corporations themselves cannot hold systems, but they can join up into alliances. Alliances are basically collections of corporations, as corporations are collections of uh, players. And you'll hear people talking about coalitions and uh, things like that, but those are actually synthetic. They're just, they're not real. Whereas actual alliances are supported within the game mechanics, and there's a whole lot of complicated mechanics surrounding them. Some alliances were, are private and will only accept members from certain parts of the internet. There are alliances which are associated with Reddit, Something Awful, 4chan and various other internet locations. There are alliances which only accept you if you speak Romanian or Russian or various other things. Um, be careful that you don't try to avo ex try to join one which won't let you in, especially if they ask for cash up front. Okay, so let's uh, complete this mission and I should now have my new spaceship. Look at that, it's a new venture. I can show info. And let's, if you do show info, you see the icon here, you can mouse over it and click on the, using it, the, using a little looking glass and you can see what it looks like. This is an industrial mining spacecraft. And if you look at the description, it tells you that for every level in mining frigate, you get a 5% bonus to mining yield and a 5% reduction to gas cloud harvesting. And also every mining laser you put on this gets a 100% bonus to mining yield. So that means that you get twice as many mining lasers minimum. This is an important thing to realize. A lot of people, they don't look at the bonuses offered by ships. If I uh, just look at the info in the Reaper, you'll see that the Reaper gets a bonus to small projectile turret, right? Now, if people try to put lasers on these things, they're wasting this bonus. This is very important to realize that Minmatar spacecraft tend to use projectile turrets and Amarians are the ones that use lasers. Anyway, we've got our cash. Let's request missions. We are going to continue in this. If you've got if you've got your eye on a career in business, then you'd better get a basic understanding of crucial industrial processes like mining ore and reprocess reprocessing into, into minerals. Even people who do nothing but play the market buying and selling minerals still understand where all that material comes from. I'd like to demonstrate your understanding of this process. It would please me to see you using a venture in the job it was designed for. Head out to the following coordinates, just over to the right there, where you can find some veiled spar asteroids. Mine the ore and then refine it into titanium. You won't need that much ore to fill my quota. If any pirates try to mess with you, make sure to clear the area. Be aware too that any equipment that might drop from them can also be reprocessed into more minerals. So I'm gonna do accept here. And what it says is, we have all this message that says, ore items, even ships can be refined into minerals using the reprocessing plant. Or will refine into its designated mineral items, etc., etc. And it talks about refining ore, where we can do all this. Now, one of the things is, if you assemble this ship and I make active, I still don't have the skills because I'm still training them. But uh, if I if I look at it, show info, show uh, strip fitting. Never mind. I, I I'll view contents. There's no contents in it, right? So this is going to need a mining laser, and this is a problem. The mission hasn't actually given us a mining laser yet, right? So you can look on the market and look, search for miner, uh, miner, and ship equipment has a miner one, which is going to cost me 14,000. Or I can buy a civilian miner for 899, but if I, uh, it says one minute and 21 seconds. There's another thing that people, uh, often overlook. If I leave this ship, you can le leave the ship and you're going to be in a pod. If I now repackage this ship, right? This is a newbie ship. This is the Reaper. It's also true if you do this with the Velator, the Ibis, or the Imperator. Now, if I assemble this ship once more and make active, all newbie ships come with default equipment. So I get a civilian miner and I get a civilian Gatling gun. So 
I can actually take this and I'll be able to fit it into my um, into my mining ship, which is good, but I've still got a minute or so to wait. 36 seconds, oh goodness. So I can't fit anything on this until then. Uh, however, if you look at the mining laser, uh, the miner, um, what does it tell you? It says this one will mine 30 meters of minerals per second. If you click on the miner one, this one will mine 40. So that civilian miner is going to get you a lot less. But since uh, you know you're low on cash right now, this might be the way to go. Since you're probably going to end up with tons of mining lasers over time, you're, they're just going to start coming out of the walls. Okay, so skill training complete. Thank you. Make this active now. So let's take a look at this nice looking spacecraft. So we have a couple of high slots here. So actually, yeah, let's let's um, repackage this. Yes, again, we don't need this anymore. Now we could put two um, two mining lasers on this, but it does say I might have to shoot bad guys. So we're gonna have to fit that gun. So let's fit the civilian miner. Let's fit the Gatling gun, and let's put the EMP ammo into the hold and we'll be able to load that and let's also fit our shield booster as well and how about fitting our civilian salvager which will be completely useless but nevertheless um, we're gonna bring it along and we are gonna launch into space now and start carrying out this mission so we're gonna continue this is explaining about insurance and we're gonna talk about this now we have a spacecraft which isn't owned by or isn't a newbie spacecraft you now have to worry about insurance because this spaceship will cost you 340,000 credits to replace now if you lose it in combat you will get a for you will get 40% of its value back so you're going to get something like 100 and something 150,000 credits that's not enough to replace it if you want you can pay more and you can buy insurance the insurance lasts for 3 months and should you lose it in combat you get some money back. And a lot of people like that. I, however, tend to decide that unless I know I'm going to lose a spacecraft, I don't insure it. That's just how I roll, I guess. Uh, which basically means I insure spacecraft just before I go, go out in PvP roams, knowing that I'm going to make a bunch of money. Okay, so we have arrived, and we are in an asteroid belt. Now, we need to find the asteroid. Here's, here's a problem. We can't see the asteroids out here. We can see a few objects. We have see a barren asteroid. We can see a hollow asteroid. We can see another hollow asteroid. That's not very interesting. None of these are mineable. Now, if you go into the overview and you can load mining, load default mining, you'll see that it has now highlighted, this given me, this is an option. Veiled spar, so let's target this. The range on this laser is 10 kilometers, so we can just sit here and start mining. And there we go. We're just mining away. We don't even need to get close. We can sit doing this from 10 kilometers out. Look at that. Mining laser just mining away. Now, this runs on a one minute cycle. At the end of every minute, you're going to get about 30 meters of ore. Actually, you're going to get about 60 because, of course, this has a bonus that doubles the amount of, the amount of uh, ore you get from this. So that's important to know. Now, it'd be really nice if we could put two lasers or two mining lasers on this. But to do so, we would need to use that second turret slot. If we bring this uh, fitting thing up, you'll see that although we have three high slots, we have only two turret icons here, right? Turrets are on this side, missile launchers are here, and none of them, we have no missile launchers, but we have two turrets. So we can't put a turret on there, even although we have three high slots. But if we want defenses, then we can actually use drones. Down here in the bottom left, we have this little cargo bay icon that tells us we have 50 cubic meters of cargo. But we also have the drone bay, which we mouse over. It says we have 10 cubic meters. And now this angel pirate has turned up. Let's target it and approach it and start shooting at it. Oh, no, I don't want to shoot the asteroid. I want to select the target up here. Now I want to select the gun. 
So I can I can put drones in there, and drones can be used for mining or they can be used for combat. Uh, now the thing is, we need to know the skills for drones. If I want to get two lasers, I need to actually train the skills. Okay, that's me. Let's find let's find this angel wreck, and we shall go towards it and start looking inside it. Oh look, I get more metal scraps. Now I can target this wreck, incidentally. It says, oh, the agent has come back and said, nice flying, get back to me once you've mined enough ore. I don't know how much ore I need at this time. But I could try salvaging this wreck, although I don't think it, I can't, yeah, you can't activate a civilian salvager. It's only used for that specific mission. Um, so anyway, if we want to look at drones, right, let's take a look at, let's take a look in this menu. We have the drone menu here in the, the in the market combat drones and you would look at light scout drones. Good ones to start with are hobgoblins. Now you see that these cost 24,000. You can also click around and you see these are different prices. Also, very, very, very important thing that has just occurred to me. If you're using the market, you see how there's columns here? You can click on any of these columns to sort things. It is a really good idea to sort things by price. Specifically, sort them so you have the low prices near the top when you're selling, or uh, when you're buying, and sort them so that you have the high prices at the top when you're buying, so that you don't accidentally buy the wrong thing. So yeah, there's hornets, hobgoblins, and you see that normal price for a hobgoblin is about 5,000, but if I want a hobgoblin in this system, I have to pay 25,000. That is how the market works. These are players that are making these chain, making these prices, right? This is not me. Um, so anyway, if we look at the skills we would need for a hobgoblin, hobgoblin's pretty good. Or a warrior is actually good if you're a minmatar, but hobgoblins are generally all round. They do the most damage. Um, if we look in the prerequisite section, it tells us I need scout drone operation level one and drones level one. So it would take me 16 minutes to train those skills. So I might actually spend time to train those skills, especially since I could spend a lot of time sitting here mining ore. If I look at my cargo bay, if I click on my cargo icon, I can look in my ore hole and I see I now have 277 cubic meters of ore here. I can just sit here and mine ore all day. I can go away and just let this run uh, until the asteroid disappears. This is why mining is so popular with lazy players. I, however, I'm just going to disappear back to station. So I'm going to switch back to general on this, and we're going to warp back to the station and take the ore we have. So I'm just going to skip over all this stuff. Ah, this this tutorial is not relevant anymore. I don't need to resume tutorial. So yeah, actually. If we want to look at the skills for scout drone operation, right, if I bring up this uh, and we move this out here, I can right click and view market details and it tells me 39,000 to learn scout drone operation and, oh, not here, I didn't mean to do that, scout drone operation has a prerequisite of drones, view market details, and that's going to cost me 20,000. So I could start learning drone skills now, and then I would be able to defend my mining ship and have two mining lasers on it, and therefore make way more cash at the mining game. I'm going to buy these skill books because they don't come any other way. They don't come during the tutorials. So there's one, and drone skills... Uh, Skills are down here. Drone and Scout Drone Operation. There we go. Trade by this. Bye. So I said bye. No? Bye. What? It dropped the window underneath it. That's great. So start training drones now. Unfortunately, I can't. I can't train this skill and I can't inject the skill because I haven't already learned the prerequisite. So I'll come back to the station. Anyway, we have the ore hold here. Let's move the ore into the item hanger. And what we're going to do is refine this. So you can go to the refining station here, reprocessing plant, and you can either click on the Veldspar and say refine this. You can also refine the metal scraps. 
I do not have a quote yet for your selection. You can't mix scraps and minerals. <laughs> get quote. Get quote. Oh, there we go. So this will refine to actually a whole pile of tritanium. Also note when you're refining, uh, you'll, say, you'll see this thing that says, you receive, we take, and unrecoverable. This is important. Basically means that the you, we take part is a tax on the station. Basically, depending upon your standing with the corporation that owns the station, you will um, they will take some of your refined minerals as payment for use of the service. The unrecoverable part is based on your skill. So the amount take root that comes out after the unrecoverable is then split between the corporation that owns the station and you. And if you are a player, if you own a station in Nullsec because you're part of an alliance, then um, you can set the refine rate, uh, the refine uh, tax levels. Um, you can improve these uh, these yields, the net yield by training skills, but that's uh, going to happen later. So we're going to get the skill book from this guy here. So talk to this guy again. Complete the mission. We have brought 333 units of Tritanium and we have 6,000 left and now we have the refining skill book. So we can add that into our training queue and I'm actually wanting to learn drones first so I'm going to stick that there. Oh, I actually need to learn industry level one. Ah, you see the tutorials still have some flaws in them. Let's get the industry skill because I'm going to need that for the industrial career path. So let's buy this. Very important to know these, to get these skills ahead of time. So let's put industry in there as well. That's going to take me eight minutes to learn that. You see, good to learn level one skills all the time. So let us continue. Let us continue with this set of missions. So no, close these things down. I don't need to see that. Let's request the next mission. <laughs> We've discovered some new information from that black box you managed to salvage. The evidence suggests that the Angel Cartel is solely responsible for the attack on the transport. It seems they've built a surveillance facility nearby. They use it to intercept shipping information and then launch attacks on our most vulnerable convoys. Full of newbies, clearly. We need you to handle this. First, you need to take out that outpost of theirs along with any cartel vessels defending it. Once the area is clear, you need to uncover any plans for future attacks. I'm asking you not only because I think you can handle the combat, but also because I figure you would benefit from some hands-on training in the art of hacking. Fit this civilian data analyzer to your ship and use it on any data storage devices. Oh man, I made that mistake myself. <laughs> you find inside the facility, once you've hacked in, you should be able to recover the data chip for me. Bring any chips you find back to me. Taking out their outpost only buys us time. We also need to see what the cartel has planned. So there we go, we're gonna accept this mission. And what they're going to do is give us a data analyzer. And when they, we complete it, they're also going to give us a hacking skill book, which is nice because that's quite pricey. So accept this. Hacking is very much like salvaging. So since we are in this venture, I'm going to switch back, right? Go to the ship hangar, assemble ship, and I can repackage this one as well. Or make active, actually. Make active on my new Reaper and strip the fitting from it. Yes, I do want to remove all the modules because I want to fit out my 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 Reaper. My Reaper is a vastly better ship, so fit to active ship. Oh, oh yes. Because I packaged this, I have the civilian guns. Civilian guns are, well, they're crap, but they do come with infinite ammunition, and infinite ammunition is not to be snorted at. So let's put one of these in and look. Let's put a civilian version in so you can compare their behavior. We're going to put the weapon, the ammunition in the cargo hold, all 0.5 cubic meters from it, off it. Actually, I think my venture, yeah, my venture still has some stuff in it. Let's put that in the item hanger. Let's put more ammunition in there. Fit my small shield booster and my civilian data analyzer. That looks much better. And we can continue. So let's let's undock. Now, hacking is normally used in NPC sites only. Hacking is used to target 
uh, specific drops by in, in dead space sites, and they you contain things like um, data cores, books, science books, and things like that. You need data cores and science books if you're gonna. Uh, do research, and if you're going to do, do do research, is what's needed to get Tech Two technology. Tech Two is way better than Tech One. There's basically um, Tech One is the standard ships. They're built with minerals only taken from asteroids. Tech Two is generally way better, although they have been nerfed somewhat in recent months. There's been a whole balancing pass done on everything, and Tech Two ships aren't quite as good as they once were. Tech 2 tends to be more specialized. Tech 3 is the step up from that, and that is only cruiser-sized spacecraft. They are modular spacecraft, and you can only build Tech 3 using bits and pieces found in wormholes. And wormholes are a whole separate thing. They're basically systems that don't connect to each other by regular stargates. You have to use random wormholes that appear and disappear. So here we go. We have an angel pirate, so let's go after this dude. Target him, and get in close. So we're gonna fly straight towards him at this time because that seems to be an excellent way. Let's take a look at this target. Look at it, it's kinda like a slug, or it's like a boomerang in space or something. This is an angel spacecraft, a very low level one. So the civilian version of the Gatling Autocannon, actually the civilian Gatling Autocannon has much better range, but it has way terrible damage. Regardless, uh, it does have infinite ammo. Yeah, you see we're doing 2 damage with the civilian version and 16 with my regular autocan. 23! Yeah, we're doing serious damage there. And there, we've blown that out of the sky and there is another wreck there. So let's go in, target that. We don't need to target it actually. Grab the metal scraps. Sometimes they drop modules and things like that right now, but we don't need, you know, metal scraps are relatively cheap. So target the data analyzer, data storage device. Select it up here using your targeting options and start the data analyzer. Now we get the data hacking game. So this is kind of like Deus Ex Human Revolution, where you basically select your next step through the grid and you have to find the data cores. Oh, defense subsystem firewall. I can attack. Let's not attack that for now. Let's step through and see if we can find some other ways into the system without upsetting this firewall. Uh, what's the empty node? Okay. Oh, look, I have completed training on that empty node. What's in here? Okay, we have no choice but to attack the firewall. So there we go. And you see that our integrity or whatever has dropped. What is it? Coherence and virus strength. Yes, strength and coherence. And apparently I wasn't able to hack that. There we go. Now we've hacked it. Let's go... We're just going to click through this. System core! Excellent. That's what I need. System core. System hack successful. Now the parts have come out, so i got to target them. And I bring them in. These things only appear for a very short time. Now you see it has thrown these icons over my cargo bay. I have a basic civilian technology data core which is absolutely useless and an encoded data chip. So now we have completed this, we're gonna head oh, back to station. Okay. We just click through modules, how to break the security. I should have actually read this. Skill re Oh, see this is why you should read these skills because they give you Read these tutorials because they give you free skill books. You see this? What? That's good. So, uh, train now to level one. Oh, I need the social skill. What about this one? Train now. I also need... Oh, I can't train contracting on a trial account. These are, however, worth money, and you will eventually need these skills. Contracting is a way of trading things without using the market. And they're essential if you want to trade a ship without stripping it off hardware. So we're now docked. Negotiation is useful because it increases your mission rewards. So start conversation and complete the mission. And now we have a hacking skill book. Now can we train that to level? Oh, we should actually train scout drone operation now. Train now to level one. Excellent. 
So if we bring up the skill queue, we can put hacking in here. Oh, no, I need electronic upgrades to level three. So I can't use hacking until I figured that one out. Meanwhile, I'll go to the market and buy that social skill book because I'll eventually need it. See, here's the thing. You really want to be training lots of low level skills because they're very fast to train and they give you boosts in all sorts of nice ways. All sorts of little, little ways. It's better to train four skills to level one than it is to train one skill to level two, right? You're gonna get more bonuses that way. So there's social skill going into my queue so I can start training other stuff. And actually, let's go into my cargo bay and move all this stuff into my hangar. So I'm starting to collect a nice little collection of uh, stuff. Let's stack everything. I'll, I'll save my refining skill until I've um, and I'll save these to refine until I've improved my refining skill. So, let's close down all these windows again. Apply changes, yes, we've got to remember to apply changes. Balancing the books, oh yeah, request mission. We're okay, so this is just a courier mission to Adler, so set destination, that's three jumps away, and it's a good idea to add a waypoint for the place you're coming. So, it says... The following items will be granted when the mission is accepted. And the following rewards will be yours when you complete the mission. Expanded cargo hold and overdrive injector system. These are useful things, but they require the hull upgrade skill, I believe. If you look at prerequisites, it says hull upgrades level 1. So let's view market details on that. Yes, the 59,000. But maybe we get this in... I don't remember if we actually get this in a mission, but I'm going to buy it, nevertheless. Buy this. Buy. Always good to have the upgrade skills. If if a skill is something upgrades, it's probably good. You have hull upgrades, shield upgrades, you know, um, electronic upgrades. They're all useful things to have. So I'm going to actually stick this in my queue in here, because that'll be a good one to go. So you see, we're now setting up all these little things and our our skill advancement is going to be so much faster now so apply that close it down also we're going to accept this mission now and it's given us the overdrive injector we can't fit it but we do need to carry this uh, encoded data chip so we need to drag that into my cargo and off we go into deep space once more and again, undocking happens very slowly. There's no undocking animations. They talked about adding those. I guess they never got them in there. Again, this scan here that happened, this is the scan icon. These are showing you sites, and these will all be taken care of in the exploration tutorial, which I will cover later. But right now, we're just going to concentrate on the business tutorial, because the business tutorial has the least number of prerequis prerequisites. And, you know, if you look at some of the value of the stuff, incidentally, um, personal assets, I wonder if it gives you, it doesn't give me uh, ideas of how much this is worth, does it? No. If you look at hacking, for example, view market details. Oh, hacking is a way cheaper skill. It used to be a 900,000 isk skill. Oh, it's 100,000 there. It used to be a very expensive skill. Oh, well. Now it's only 100,000, so the benefits of this tutorial session, or these tutorial missions, are somewhat reduced. So just, you can fly this uh, on autopilot if you like. You're certainly, no one is going to suicide gank you, but it's kind of nice to, you know, fly through the various systems. If you look over these, you can actually mouse over each of the spate, these boxes here, and it'll tell you about the systems. Now, you'll see the name followed by a number, see, Illuin... 0.9, right? 0.9 is the security status. Now, security status goes from plus one to minus one. Uh, anything above, anything 0.5 and above is safe and secure. It has Concord police, and if any illegal action is taken, Concord will come in and destroy the perpetrators, but perhaps not quickly enough to prevent them carrying out their nefarious plans. Below 0.5, Concord does not exist, but you're still in 
faction space, so you can still get, oh, you still can have problems with faction police, and moreover, there are gate guns, so if you engage on a, or there are sentry guns, sentry guns are placed around stations and gates, and if you perform an illegal act, say you attack somebody near a gate or near a station, the sentry guns will start shooting you. And sentry guns, um, they cannot be dodged, you can't destroy them, they will just keep doing damage to you until you are destroyed. So it's important to realize this, um, it's so that you can't loiter around near gates for too long. This does make low sec a little safer than null security space, but not much. Now, null security space is when everything goes negative sec status. At that point, um, there's a bunch of new technologies that you can use in null sec, you cannot use in high sec. Specifically, you can use warp disruption bubbles that stop people warping within uh, a certain sphere. And these are frequently placed on gates def as defensive options to stop pilots going through the gates as quickly as, as um, they can, I guess. As a, <laughs> too quickly. Um, if you can stop somebody warping, then you can stop them running away and you can kill them. That is the primary way that PvP happens. You can almost always warp away. But uh, if you are if you are scrambled by a targeted warp scrambler or warp disruptor, or if you are in a sphere of warp disruption, then you are in trouble and you cannot run away. Other things that are available in null security space are bombs from stealth bombers, uh, Titan Doomsday weapons, which do, do something like two million points of damage to a single capital ship. Also, yeah, capital ships are only available to most people in low security and null sec. They cannot be brought into high security space. The main thing that enforces this is that to Open navigate with a, a capital Open ship, requested. you do it using, using a jump drive, and a jump drive needs a target to lock onto. And the target is called a beacon. These are beacons that are basically lit by small frigates or, well, whatever, but most people put them on cheap disposable frigates because they have to stay lit for 10 minutes. So I've com I'm going to complete this mission, get my rewards, and yes, in, I guess, I don't know where they put that. Maybe they put it back at the destination so we don't lose it. So I'm going to undock and fly back. Notice this station belongs to the Minmatar Mining Corporation, and you can do information on them to find out all sorts of fascinating details that the thing... Minmatar Mining Corporation is the only Minmatar Corporation still in existence that can trace its foundation to before the conquest of Minmatar space by the Amarians. It managed to stay in business while the Amarians ruled the Minmatar only because it was useful to the Amarians. Now it is useful to the Republic by providing the raw materials to build a space fleet to defend the Republic against the Amar Empire and its minions. And yeah, it tells you all the usual things. You cannot join this corporation because it is an NPC corporation, and you can't choose which NPC corporations to join. So now I have scout drone operation level one. I should be able to put some drones in my spacecraft and do a little more damage, which will be nice. It's always nice to be able to do more damage to my adversaries. I have 217,000 discs as well. I should be able to buy something. Uh, Actually, let's take a look at the Hobgoblin is what I want. Hobgoblins, drone, Hobgoblin 1. And nothing on the route. Oh well, let's continue. I'm going to have to pay a l Oh, actually, no, Embod. Yes, 25,000. Let's also look at Warrior. Warrior are useful for people as Minmatar players. Oh, there, let's stop, let's stop this. Location, and we're going to dock here. We're going to save ourselves some money, right? So I'm going to buy this. Buy one of... Actually, let's buy two of these because I can use them in my venture. And I'm going to dock. So I'm because I started to warp towards the gate with the jump through button, I can cancel the jump through by holding control and space. It says you cannot do it while warping, but it will actually cancel my my jump attempt. So, come on. There, we arrive on the gate, but now we're going to do a turnaround. Please wait. Location, dock. 
So now we're going to dock and we're going to warp back. And in fact, I should close this down so you can see. So note what I did there, incidentally, was I had the... I had the market display up and I right clicked on the row. The jumps column tells you how many jumps away the system is that has this particular offer. Uh, the quantity tells you how much is available. The price is obviously the price. Uh, location tells you how many and there's an expiration date on some of these. Um, also, sometimes you'll see a minimum volume which is greater than zero. These are, these are th people who are selling them and these are people who are buying them. Note that people buy them typically for less money than they are sold for. This is called this is basically a standard technique where you buy something cheap and then you resell it for more. So for example, heck has people buying them for five thousand one hundred and one, but they're then reselling those for nine thousand one hundred and eighty six. So they're making uh you know about four thousand credits on each of those sales. Anyway, and the item hanger? So I can drop one in the drone bay, and because I can only drop one in there, it, it tells me to select a number. And then I'll put the other one in the cargo bay so I can move it into my um, into my ventures cargo uh, into my ventures drone bay when I get there, I get to the destination. Okay. So we're continuing and what else is important about this? So certificates uh, is the next item on it. We can look at the certification planner. Now this is a whole, give you a whole tutorial on certificates which you can read through in your own time. The main thing about certificates is that it tells you what you're good at. Unfortunately, certificates were an idea that came and were pretty useless to be honest. But nevertheless, they're kind of useful because they tell you what kind of skills you might need. Now. If I look at, for example, if I want core capacitor, right, standard, then I need to train these skills. I need energy systems operation, energy grid upgrade, energy management, and core capacitor basic. Core capacitor basic, I need energy systems operation level three, energy management, etc., etc. These are kind of useful if you're joining corporations because you can share these certificates with um, people and you can show that you have certain basic skills but most corporations don't do it that way what they in fact uh, do is ask for an API key which is something that you do on their website you can go to support.evonline.com slash API and create an API key the API key will then you let you use export your Eve information to third-party applications and there are a lot of third-party applications that help you manage your character they help you build spacecraft and various other things Evemon is a great example of this Evemon is an application which will track your skill training and will help you figure out what you need to train it will also run in the background and give you alerts when you are about to run out of training, when your queue is about to expire, so you don't forget. I have something on my iPhone called Capsuleer, which again will give me a little iPhone alert saying, hey, you've got 24 hours uh, before your skill queue expires, you better log in and you know train something else. And that is you know, a good thing to do. Another really useful application is either PyFa, which is Py, Python Fitting Assistant, or um, EFT, Eve Fitting Tool. Both of these let you um, imagine what spacecraft are. You take your spacecraft, plug in the modules, plug in your skills, and tell you how good that is, whether it's fast, whether it will run out of capacitor, or various other things. Uh, you will see people spending a lot of time optimizing their ship designs okay, and they're generally referred to as EFT warriors, which is something of um, a perjurative term because it implies that they wouldn't actually fight in their spacecraft, that most of their time is taken up with designing spacecraft and never actually using them. So, balancing the books, mission six, you've proven yourself unafraid of combat. 
But the next attack coming from the Angel Cartel is well beyond your capabilities. We have to approach the problem from another direction if we want to handle them safely. The security forces guarding the next target aren't operating at full capacity thanks to budget cuts. We need to stock them with whatever they need to fight. Uh, fight off the angels. Currently they have a shortage of tracking computer one modules. Without them, the large projectile turrets on our battleships will really struggle to track faster, smaller vessels. I need you to acquire one of these modules. One might not seem like much, but once word gets around that we have a contract, capsuleers do such rudimentary things. It should help bring some attention to our plight. Can you help us? So let's actually look at this. Yeah, a tracking computer is designed to increase the tracking ability. It increases the tracking speed of turrets and the fall off and the optimal range. This basically makes your um, turrets hit things more accurately. Now you can actually, before you accept this mission, find one of these because it tells you what you need to complete the mission. Now you see, if you go to the market, you can see in here there's one for 23,000, but if you go two jumps away, you can pay only 16,000. But look, it's only yeah, it's only a few thousand credits. It's only 7,000 credits. Just buy it here, right? Oh, buy one here. And that's it. It goes into your hangar, accept the mission, and then complete the mission. Bang! Pro all done. Mission complete. Uh, click through the tutorial, read it if you like. I've already talked about the market a lot, but I'm just going to click through this because perhaps you get some skills such as trade and retail. That's great. Done. So the, I have a long tutor tutorial on the market and you can go and look that up at some point. So yeah, let's take a look at my item hanger now. I'm going to move the warrior drone over there. Um, you saw that we had a skill complete, so let's open my skills, open the training queue. We have the hull upgrade skill training right now so that we can fit things like the overdrive injector system. Uh, we finished training drone skills. We haven't finished training in um, that. So there's nothing else that we can inject. We can inject the trade skill and that is a prerequisite for retail. So uh, yeah, that's us. I think we've, we're coming up on an hour here. I'm doing this way more slowly because I'm trying to explain everything that comes up. And this is basically me being to giving you a complete brain dump, right? There's a lot of icons and I will cover everything eventually, but you know, the game is vastly more interesting <laughs> than this seems. Uh, everything in itself is actually very simple. The market mechanics are very simple. The spacecraft mechanics are very simple. But when you combine everything, you get one giant ball of systems, which can become very complex to understand. But if you take it one system at a time, it becomes very easy. Anyway, we're going to continue with this and other missions later. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.